In this PixInsight process tutorial, we're looking at adaptive stretch. PixInsight calls adaptive stretch a general contrast and brightness manipulation tool, or how I would call it, one of the zillion possibilities of stretching within PixInsight. And so the main question is, is it any good? So I have here a picture that I need to stretch. If we look at it, it is the Western Veil vale Nebula. It's recorded with Optolong L Pro filter. And the main reason I did this picture is for getting the stars. So I don't care here so much about the nebula. I care more about the stars. So it's not an easy picture to stretch. And we see right away that the screen transfer function does actually a rather bad job. It is completely overstretched. So let's see what we can do with the adaptive stretch. So what is the point of adaptive stretch? The point is that they say that you actually define where the noise is and that this tool doesn't stretch the noise, but only everything above the noise. That's why it should be good. So the first thing you do is actually you open the preview. The next thing we're doing, we go to noise threshold and we increase the number, but it's a minus number, so in principle we decrease it until the picture explodes. And that's now. See, with a minus four, it's still okay. With a minus five, it's exploding. And that's exactly what we want. By the way, here you also have the curve. And that's kind of an interesting fun, uh, possibility here that you live see the curve of the stretching. So the next thing we're doing, we want the contrast to be protected, which means the very dark and the very bright areas. We don't want them to be stretched equally. So we select that. So here in the contrast protection, we also have to change the exponent and we have to try it out literally. Because if we put it on too low, for example, a minus four, and I will just show you with these levers what's happening, you'll see it doesn't really have any effect at all. If we go too high, let's like, let's say a minus two, you will not even get the right picture anymore. So here minus three seems to be the sweet spot. And if we go now up here, you see now we're getting a nice protection and we can also adjust it a little bit that it's not too extreme. And now with the noise threshold, we try to figure out the exact stretch that we want, that we don't too dark and probably something around that seems to be good. Now let's talk to the region of interest. If you want to, and we have to disactivate your preview for that. I need obviously to stretch it. I can create a preview. So for example, I can say one of the most characteristic areas of the nebulosity of my picture is around here. So that's now my preview. Now very important is that once we actually selected the preview, we remove again the stretch here. Now we can go back here. We say from preview select the preview okay and open now here the preview again so now obviously having this selected we have here to check again what's actually working best and we're adjusting it again so i don't think the result is better now with the region of interest activated than it was before but it is an option once you're happy you will then actually click here so here we have now our stretched picture now my opinion about this process. The result here is definitely better than what you can do with the screen transfer function, but that's a really, really low bar. <laughs> Generally, I wonder there's about five ways how to stretch in PixInsight, and that's just the default process. I'm not even talking about the scripts, but just the default processes. And do we really need five ways to stretch? I don't think so. It's just confusing people. And this is really, really not a good way to stretch. There's too much randomness trying to figure out with, with the two parameters, the right combination. And I'm not really excited what I see here. It looks like the stars are completely blown out here. Um, it, it looks much too rough. And it's also not really intuitive. With a histogram transformation, you know what you're doing. It's quite of obvious when you shift these, these settings. But here, it's, it's not really clear. It's like a little bit random. So to sum it up, you know now what's behind the adaptive stretch. 
you know in principle how it would work, but you also know that most likely you should not really use it, but use another way to stretch. Be it a generalized hyperbolic stretch, being some new stretching pixel mass scripts from Bill, and I will leave a link to that in the description below. They're absolutely fantastic and extremely easy. So this stuff is much, much better than we, what we have done here. This is just confusing. So I hope I have some better things to report on the next processes. I hope you stay with me on this journey through the Pixie Inside processes. And so see you next time and clear skies. Thank you.